Hi everyone and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we're looking at Roland's LX708. This is their flagship digital upright piano. It does not get any better than this in the Roland line and there's lots to love. Uh, we are going to dive into the sound engine. We're going to be talking about and sampling some of its wonderful piano tones, letting you hear them at home talking about the action, reviewing the other features that it has, and giving you a look that goes beyond the brochure, or at least that's what we really hope and love to do here on the channel. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on Miriam Pianos and YouTube, we would love for you to also subscribe and become a valued member of our community. Uh, leave us a comment, uh, hit that notification bell. We'd love to see you back for more videos. So without further ado, let's get started with the Roland LX708 right away. One of the clear hallmarks on any of the LX series from Roland is the obvious emphasis on tone. Tone generation, uh, great tone from the speakers, uh, cabinetry doing what it's supposed to in terms of not just an aesthetic presentation but also assisting with the acoustics of the instrument itself. Uh, and the circuitry behind this instrument, I mean, uh, more than anything, this is Roland's uh, answer to the question of whether a digital piano uh, can really truly be used as a substitute for an acoustic upright. Um, much in the same way as Kawhi uh, has with their NV5. The tone of the piano is generated on the Roland uh, from a, a fairly new, I, th I think just within the last year or two, uh, modeling piano engine uh, that's built upon uh, what they came out with with their V piano. So it's a little more refined. The computer model is a little more complex. Uh, there are a few extra parameters that they allow you to uh, edit, but by and large, the character of the tone uh, remains the same. They've now lumped this into two camps or two tonal characters. Well, one they call European Grand and the other they call the American Grand. So undoubtedly the American Grand is a reference to New York Steinway. The European Grand, I'm not particularly sure which they are uh, referencing or which character they're trying uh, to go for. Uh, in some moments, I think that they may have modeled some kind of a Bosendorfer. In other moments, it sounds maybe that they've gone for C. Beckstein. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard to say, but anyway, the labels are American Grand and European Grand. And the two characters are sufficiently different and both very satisfying. Uh, the piano has, uh, you know, or Roland has placed a huge emphasis on the speaker system and the placement of the speakers and the active crossovers and all the different amplifiers that are working to deliver an unbelievably pure tone. Um, and there are aspects of this instrument that I just absolutely love. Um, so there are eight speakers inside the LX708. And I don't know if it's a coincidence that the LX708 has eight and the LX706 has six. Uh, probably not a coincidence, actually. Um, so there are four stereo amplifiers in here driving uh, each of those four pairs uh, of speakers. And so you're getting highs out of the place in the cabinet that you expect highs to come out of and mids and lows and all of that kind of stuff uh, is really quite um, meticulous and unbelievably detailed. That was European Grand. This is, of course, uh, American Grand. Uh, 
I don't know why, as soon as I say American Grand, I just have this sudden urge to play Gershwin. Uh, interesting association. Anyway. So each of those piano models has the ability to be edited extensively, and you can do that both through the Piano Designer app or the onboard Piano Designer. And it gives you options such as adjusting duplex scale and the soundboard type. Uh, you can adjust, uh, you know, key off uh, volume and uh, cabinet resonance and all sorts of things for you to get uh, kind of the perfect sound. it's worth it to spend the time is when you've got this many speakers and it's been that carefully considered each room will give this piano a different acoustic presentation so you're going to want to spend the time to get in there and really muck with it and find the ideal tone uh, for your ear. Uh, the piano modeling uh, means that this gets unlimited polyphony and for people who are not familiar with what the term polyphony means um, maximum polyphony I suppose is the full expression uh, that should be used uh, that means uh, or refers to the the maximum number of notes that the piano can simultaneously process or, or play and we have a whole other video on exactly what that is with a few demonstrations so check that out if you wish but this has unlimited polyphony and that's one of the things that modeling generally gives the player as an advantage so doesn't matter how many uh, notes get played with the pedal down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, it'll always continue to be processing all of those interactions with those harmonics. That's pretty cool. Uh, the tone... It's also quite dynamic. The, the tonal range that you get out of both of these different models, uh, from loud to soft or soft to loud, It's really wonderful, the range of color and the range of sound that you get out of these tone engines. I feel like the dynamicism is, is a much more uh, present on the European Grand. Oh yeah, there's actually, there's actually not a lot of comparison there. 
uh, there's way more tonal palette on the European Grand. Yeah, I mean, the speakers are so detailed that when you're playing in the European Grand, you're just kind of flitting about, which is exactly what's happening here. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry for the musical diarrhea. Um, but it really is quite like a, a painting experience. It's fun to hear how all of these different textures manifest as you're playing through them. So huge amount uh, of room, hum huge amount of musical space to explore. And again, I mean, I, the more I play this, the more I'm not even split, even, even close. The European Grand, to me, is a dramatically superior This instrument does have other sounds other than acoustic. I know that we've been kind of stuck on acoustic for a few minutes here, uh, but it does have all of the other really beautiful uh, sounds uh, that are available in other Roland instruments. The 1976 suitcase. That's really uh, great. What's so interesting to me is I know these patches like the back of my hand because many of them are present in the RD2000. I mentioned this before, that is that is the stage piano that I use regularly uh, in uh, playing situations. But to hear them rendered through the signal processing that's present on the LX708 and coming through this eight speaker system, it's like I'm hearing them for the first time. There's detail. Yeah, there's, there's detail there that just simply does not come through when you're only playing this through headphones or uh, something else. It's very satisfying.
So the e-pianos, just so much dimension to them coming through here. I won't go through them all, uh, but there's also some great strings. That's nice. Okay, I mean strings are hard. We're not going to give them a too, too uh, difficult a time here, especially when there's two or three in there that are highly fun to play. That's two or three more than normally you'd get on most digital pianos. Uh, so there's a bit of brass in there as well. And then you get into other, and other is more or less just your general MIDI 2 sound bank. So lots to play with here, but I really appreciate the fact uh, that clearly they've found a way Either I, I, you know, I don't have the architecture of how they've uh, designed the whole audio flow through here, but clearly they are taking advantage of what they built here with the 708 to draw all sorts of dimension out of some of their key sounds, acoustic piano, uh, e-piano, and some of those orchestral sounds. Really lots to enjoy here uh, on, this, on the LX708 from a sound perspective. If there was one thing that I found to be slightly lacking is I would love uh, just a little bit more bottom end out of this instrument. It's really beautifully balanced, um, but I could see some situations where having that control or the ability to just uh, bump a bit of the bass response would be nice. Um, but again, that's going to be a very personal thing, and it's going to change from room to room. Uh, we're in a bit of a larger room here. Uh, it's got a hard floor, so obviously the lower frequencies are going to get sucked up a bit more in, in an environment like this uh, than were it a smaller room, possibly with a, a slightly uh, more reverberant floor. Either way, thank you so much for being with us for the LX708 so far. We are going to move on to action, which is another really important discussion point, and uh, we'll throw some of those specs up about the sound experience on the screen so you can see them, and we'll be right back. So the LX708 and LX706 use Roland's newest actions called a grand hybrid action. The general configuration is still the same. You basically got a, a plastic key about yay long, there's a, a hinge on the back, there's a counterweight uh, that's kind of built into the key uh, just to preserve the space, uh, and there is a let off simulator. The big difference with the grand hybrid action uh, is that the key length has been uh, significantly lengthened and the geometry has been improved. So is there a difference? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a difference. Um, I really enjoy playing this action. Uh, I find it to be uh, very smooth, very light, um, but uh, should light's not the right word to use. Fluid would be more the right word. Um, the weighting on this feels very much like um, like a, a smaller European Grand, which tends to be on the slightly lighter side. I haven't weighed the keys, but that's just my uh, subjective impression of the weight of the keys and what we get out of those keys. Uh, there is a really lovely subtle texture on the top of the white keys and on top of the black keys. I like the responsive speed on these uh, keys and the fact that they use a wood core helps to deliver a, a slightly more authentic dynamic motion dy and dynamic resistance uh, to the key. That's one of the things that plastic key actions or these compact actions have always had a trouble with is it's easy enough to simulate uh, the resistance of what it takes to get the key in motion. The trouble is uh, once it's in motion, a lot of times those keys become much lighter than a real acoustic key would have, 
uh, and that's what makes them feel a little less authentic than they should. This seems to overcome this uh, quite a bit. It's still a little on the lighter side when you compare it to a real acoustic, um, but I think it's, it's, it's probably the best uh, effort that I've ever played on Roland, and I'm a fan of Roland actions. Uh, you know, I love the PHA 50, I'm very familiar with the PHA 4, um, and the, uh, you know, the G feel action before that. So uh, the triple sensor on here makes this a really, really accurate sensor, and I like the fact uh, that how they've interfaced this action with the piano modeling engine gives ridiculous amounts of depth and color to play with. And in the first segment of the video, I think that was pretty apparent uh, that the accuracy of the action and how they've been able to match that uh, with the piano model creates some really wonderful musical opportunities for shading and voicing uh, chords and, and melodies. So, uh, I fully expect that this action is going to make its way into multiple Roland products uh, over the coming years. Uh, to my knowledge uh, right now, at this time, there's just two, but I would expect to see probably some grand models in the future start to use this action as well. So, uh, we're going to return for a third uh, quick segment. We're going to talk through some of the other features, uh, such as the educational features that are on here and some of the play along features. Uh, but we'll get some specs up on the action and we will be right back. So the other features available on the LX708 are similar to what you're going to find on other Rolands and quite frankly on other digital pianos from all of the other major manufacturers at this price point, Kawhi, Yamaha, uh, all of the rest. Uh, but let's go through them nonetheless. So this has uh, the ability to take two stereo quarter inch outputs and send them to another home stereo or some sort of a PA. That's how we are miking this instrument. Well, uh, sound sourcing this instrument today uh, is out of those two jacks. It also has a 3.5 millimeter stereo input, an auxiliary input that you can use. Uh, the Roland is equipped with both Bluetooth MIDI as well as Bluetooth audio. I feel like I should mention this virtually every time. That is inbound Bluetooth audio not outbound. Uh, do not expect to be able to broadcast audio from this instrument to another uh, sound device such as headphones. Won't work. Uh, so don't be disappointed. Be aware of it. Uh, but you can use this as a Bluetooth speaker, which is really quite cool uh, because there are going to be very few home stereos that actually will process the audio and output it in such a detailed way as this. Unless, of course, you've already got some crazy audio file system in your house, in which case, Lucky you. Uh, but for those who aren't or don't and can't make the double investment, this would be really cool uh, to have as your main source of sound in, say, a living room. Uh, and you can do that without a wire with the Bluetooth audio. Uh, this also includes a number of integrated lesson books. Uh, so not the books themselves, but the repertoire. So you can use this as a source to play uh, things back. It has a number of play along functions uh, where you can take some of the very most popular classical songs and play along with the right hand or the left hand and some of them are just piano, some of them are just orchestral, so that's very cool as well. Uh, and then all of your standard stuff. Uh, you've got your metronome, it's got a full drum kit, uh, it's got some rhythms, um, it, it, you can split the keyboard, you can layer sounds and, uh, and headphones of course as well. So. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for the Roland 708 uh, review uh, and uh, kind of overview. I've really enjoyed getting to know this instrument uh, a lot more and so I hope you have as well. There aren't very many instruments in this category, um, but the ones that are, we will be doing some comparison videos as well uh, coming up in the next several weeks. Uh, the LX708 versus the Kawhi uh, Novus 5 is one that I'm particularly looking forward to. Uh, because they bring uh, different uh, but equally cool things to the table. Uh, and of course, I'm already a huge fan of the NV5, as many of you will already know. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed and you found the video to be useful, we would love for you to subscribe and become part of our community. Hit that notification bell. You'll know every time we come out with a new video. Uh, and uh, leave us a comment. Let you know what we thought. 
My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you again soon.